Hi, I'm Jim McDonald. I'm an herbalist from Michigan. And um, I'm not in Michigan, I'm in Oregon. And I'm walking around and I'm looking at plants and a lot of them I don't know, but I see some that I do know. Or some that I might at least kind of know to their genus. And if I were in Michigan and I saw this plant, you can see these are just starting to grow and these have grown for a while. And then back here, you can see much taller ones, some of which seem taller than I am. Um, it is a horsetail. Normally when we think about horsetail, we might think about Equisetum arvensis um, or field horsetail. And if I were in Michigan and I saw this, I would maybe call it scouring rush is a common name that's not species specific. Um, but since I'm in a place that I don't know and I don't know which Equisetum species grow here and there may be you know, lookalikes that I'm not familiar with, what I do know is this is an Equisetum species. So I could say Equisetum spa, SP, meaning a species within the Equisetum genus. And uh, herbalists use horsetail and we like it. And maybe one thing to start with is sometimes people will say like, I've read that horsetail has something in it that interferes with thiamine metabolism and it's maybe like dangerous or I need to be cautious with it. And that's true. There's a, there's a constituent in horsetails um, called thiaminase. And thiaminase does disrupt thiamine metabolism. However, thiaminase is broken down if it's boiled and it's broken down if it is extracted in alcohol above 30%. So if you're thinking about making an infusion where you at least bring it up to a boil and then lower the temperature, you don't have to worry about the thiaminase. If you're making a tincture where the alcohol percentage is over 30%, which most people are probably gonna do, you don't have to worry about the thiaminase. Um, horsetail is a really nutrient dense plant. It's very rich in minerals and it is especially rich in silica. So it has a very high silica content. Um, another herb that has a very high silica content is oat straw. And when I'm thinking about an herb that I'm most likely to add to a tea or an infusion to provide silica content, I usually do favor oat straw over horsetail or scouring brush or an equisetum species because horsetails in general um, are also a little bit more diuretic and maybe they feel a little bit more medicinal to me, whereas oat straw just feels like it's mostly just a nutritive herb, right? And I don't have to think so much of, about it having like a more medicinal effect. But I can throw in small amounts or pinches of horsetail uh, into an infusion or a decoction uh, to increase the mineral content and the silica content and maybe even do that um, with oat straw, if I'm using oat straw, uh, just to up that silica content. And when I think about, well, when, when do I think about using horsetail um, as a nutritive to provide mineral nutrition, especially to provide silica? Um, silica and things that are rich in silica are helpful for like stimulating or promoting hair growth or like making sure that your hair is like healthy and strong because there's a lot of silica in here. So it's like a raw material for that. Um, so infusions of oat straw, maybe with a pinch of horsetail can be uh, appropriate for that. Sometimes I've used something like that when someone's been really sick or they've had a baby or they've had some other health condition that caused some like, you know, they're taking a shower and they look down and they're like, oh, my hair is falling out. I felt like that before. Um, and this seems to like not completely change that, you know, um, if you have no hair, you're not going to start drinking this and then all of a sudden look like Yanni. Um, that might be a dated joke, but someone out there is laughing. Uh, but it can help. It can help lessen the rate at which hair is coming out. So that's really useful. But a place that I use this quite a bit is when people have had damage to their connective tissues, right? Um, their ligaments, their tendons, their cartilage. And um, if you've had this kind of damage, you know, definitely figure out what's going on. Don't just be like, I'll just take horsetail and not do anything else. You know, try to find out what's going on. But I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, the, you know, my cartilage is damaged. There's nothing that can be done to help that. And horsetail, in my experience, has seemed to be pretty helpful. Um, and you could, you can do what makes sense. And what makes sense is to do 
a strong infusion or a decoction of this plant. And again, with an infusion, you want to get it up to boiling to get rid of the thiaminase, to denature that um, thiaminase. And what shouldn't work is to make a tincture of this. Because tincture doesn't extract minerals well. And you take tincture in small doses, it's not providing you with a lot of minerals. And that's totally true. But you know, when I first started using this plant like this, I just didn't know that. Like I was, I was a little herbalist, about that big. Didn't know stuff. And I used it for people that had cartilage injuries and it helped. And not only did they feel that it helped them, but I remember some of them, like they got MRIs done and it showed that it helped them. And this reminds me of an important principle that I learned from an herbalist in Helsinki, Finland named Henriette Kress, which is that plants don't read books. And because of that, sometimes they don't know that they can't do the things that they do. So when you're thinking about plants and you're thinking about all the reasons that something makes sense and then somebody says something and you're like, well, that doesn't make sense and so that can't work. Maybe that's true, but maybe the plant just didn't know it and did something anyway. And we always want to stay open to that possibility when we are you know, living in the wonder of nature and how plants work uh, for us.